friends and thank you once again for joining us. I've often said in my videos that Christians who are accused of blasphemy often rot in prison. And once they are done rotting in prison, they are then sentenced to death under this barbaric blasphemy law Pakistan has. This is a story of exactly that. This story starts back in July of 2011. A Seventh-day Adventist Christian of Pakistan named Sajad Masi was sentenced to life in prison for allegedly blaspheming Muhammad under Pakistan's blasphemy laws. Sajid Masi at the time was 29 years old and he was convicted of sending blasphemous text messages to a member of a religious extremist group back in 2011. Do you really think a Christian that lives in Pakistan will send blasphemous text messages to a Muslim who is known to be an extremist? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Tariq Salim, who initially accused Javed of sending the blasphemous text messages, got Javed arrested, but later retracted his story, saying that Sajad was actually not involved. And the prosecutors also failed to provide any evidence of Sajad's involvement but they were still able to get a conviction of life in prison. Why, you ask? Let me tell you why. Judge Mia Shahzad Raza heard this case back in 2013, and there was an extreme amount of pressure from Muslims to sentence Sajjad to death at that time. And there were also death threats against Sajjad's lawyer and the judge and his family. This is why the judge pronounced the sentence of life in prison without any evidence because the judge did not want to die and he did not want his family to be killed. Along with his life in prison, the judge added on a fine of 200,000 rupees, which works out to roughly 2,000 US dollars, which a poor Pakistani family will never be able to pay. This is how peaceful Islam is in Pakistan and how peaceful Muslims are in Pakistan. Do you see how Muslims in the West tell us how tolerant Islam is and Muslims are very peaceful? The only reason they are tolerant in the West is because they are not the majority. Look at some Western countries that do have a majority of Muslims living in their country. An example of such a place is England. Take your time and go study what is happening in England today. There is a chapter in the Quran that Muslims in the West quote to prove to us that Islam is peaceful and that Muslims are peaceful as well. It is chapter al kafirun which says, Say, O disbelievers, I do not worship what you worship, nor are you worshippers of what I worship, nor will I be a worshipper of what you worship, nor will you be a worshipper of what I worship. For you is your religion, and for me is my religion. This chapter of the Quran actually proves Muhammad to be a false prophet, because in ayah 5 and 6, Muhammad says that these pagans will not worship what he worships. but all of the pagans eventually became Muslims. So they did worship what Muhammad worshipped. Also, Muhammad said, To you, your religion, and for me, is my religion. Well, in the future, all of these pagans changed their religion and became Muslims. This chapter in the Quran provides clear evidence that Muhammad is a false prophet because he was wrong about the pagans not worshipping what he worships. Anyway, we will continue with our story. John Graz of Public Affairs and Religious Liberty for the Adventist World Church said, Javed's case is not unusual. Members of religious minorities in Pakistan live with the constant threat of being accused of blasphemy. They know that if they are accused, they cannot count on a serious investigation. According to reports, Sajad was framed by a man named Donald Butti, who back in May of 2011 forcibly married Sajad's then fiancé, Ruma by coercing her parents with promises of taking her to the West. Bhatti was also jealous of Sajad's relationship with Ruma, so somehow he wanted to destroy their relationship, so he came up with a plan. In December, the Gojra police searched Sajad's house, looking for evidence and intending to arrest him. At the time, his accuser, Tariq Salim, had informed local police of the text messages and urged them to track the cell phone number and arrest its owner. The number was traced and it was discovered to be registered in Bhatti's wife's name. Ruma told Sajad that Donald Bhatti had purchased a SIM card using her ID card and arranged for an accomplice to send these blasphemous messages. Bhatti was hoping that all he had to say was Sajad sent the text messages using Roma's phone. 
and this would get rid of Sajjad and the Sajjad would no longer have a relationship with his wife. The Gojara police eventually arrested Masi on December 28, 2011. His lawyer accompanied him to the Gojara city police station where he hoped Sajjad could record a statement and clear his name. But the case was registered under Pakistan's blasphemy laws, which calls for the death penalty or life imprisonment for any person found guilty of blaspheming Muhammad. Michael Dida, president of Adventist Church's Pakistan Union, said that the laws are notoriously used to take revenge on Christians and other religious minorities. Pakistan is 96% Muslim with only 2% of the country's population identifying itself as Christian. He continued and said, We as a minority faith are concerned about the misuse of this law and growing intolerance towards Christians in the country. Earlier this year, Pakistan was categorized as a Tier 1 country by the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom for systemic, ongoing, and egregious intolerance towards minority faith groups. After more than a year and a half in district jail, Toba Tek Singh, where Sajjad had been sentenced to life in prison despite the fact that under cross-examination, his accuser, Tariq Salim, admitted he had not received any blasphemous text messages as he originally claimed. Furthermore, affidavits from Sajjad's co-workers confirmed that he was at work in Pakpatan at the time prosecutors claim he sent the text messages from his former fiancé's cell phone. So, think about this. In late December, Sajjad was sent to prison for life, not having committed any crime except being a Christian of Pakistan. Sajjad has been rotting away in prison in Pakistan for over nine years. Fast forward to March 19, 2021. Pakistan ruled in favor of an Islamist legal group called khatam e nabuat Forum, which translated means Movement for the Finality of the Prophethood who petitioned to the Lahore High Court on March 10th and successfully got the sentence changed from sentence to life in prison to the death penalty for a Christian who was convicted of sending blasphemous text messages back in 2011. All of this was done without any evidence. Sajjad's appeal for the conviction has been pending with the Lahore High Court for the last seven years. Javed Sahotra told the judge that in section 426 of the Code of Criminal Proceedings that if after two years an appeal has not been heard by the convicted within two years of filing an appeal against a conviction, then that conviction is suspended and the accused should be released on bail. Javed Sahotra said that in our case it has been three years and three months that have passed and the appeal has not been heard and there is no evidence against Sajjad Masi from Tariq Salim complainant of this case. Because in his statement, Tariq Salim on record said that he did not see Sajjad Masi committing the offense of blasphemy nor did anybody else see him committing this offense. I guess Pakistani laws are only for its Muslim majority and they don't apply to the Christian minority unless you're using the law to punish them. Once Javed Sahotra was done speaking, Judge Alia Neelam said she refuses to hear any blasphemy cases. And she said because she didn't know that this was a blasphemy case until just right now, she will let another judge hear this case. The reason this judge made this decision is because if she presided over this case and when it was time to present the evidence, and of course, because there is no evidence to present, she would be forced under the law to free the innocent Christian. If this judge freed Sajjad, the peaceful Muslims will kill her and her family. At any rate, on March 10th, 2021, a large group of khatam e nabuat lawyers swarmed the courtroom during a hearing on both Sajjad's appeal and their petition. This was an intimidation tactic designed to obtain convictions and harsh sentences. According to sources, they wanted to keep their identity secret because they do not want to be killed by these peace-loving Muslims we hear so much about in the West. They told the judge that capital punishment was the only sentence for blaspheming against Islam's prophet, and that Sajjad must be executed without delay, said one source. I will show you a tweet and read it for you. This tweet was tweeted by Zishan Ahmed Awan, who is a lawyer for the khatam e nabuat group. He said in his tweet, Criminal Appeal Sajjad Masi Gill vs. State, 
Honorable Lahore High Court accepts our prosecution argument that capital sentence is the only possible sentence in blasphemy and imprisonment for life, though provided in 295C PPC, awarded by trial court, is illegal, being repugnant to injunctions of Islam. Criminal revision admitted, notice to accused for conversion of life imprisonment to death sentence issued. Appeal of accused sent to division bench. Though I led final arguments today, but actual credit goes to Great Ghulam Mustafa, CH, ADVSC, and Takir Khan, AHC. Presence of Sajid Lasari, AHC, gave great courage to me. Allah bless them for their noble efforts. Yes, Allah bless them for killing an innocent Christian of Pakistan for literally doing absolutely nothing. Can you see how peaceful Islam is now? Can you see how peaceful Muslims are? Sajjad was charged under Section 295C of the Blasphemy Laws, which states that whoever by words either spoken or written or by visible representation or by any imputation, innuendo or insinuation directly or indirectly defiles the sacred name of Muhammad shall be punished with death or imprisonment for life and shall also be liable to a fine. My friends, do you see how the poor Christians of Pakistan suffer? But we are told by Muslims in the West how tolerant Islam is and how peaceful Muslims are. In theory, it sounds so nice, but in practice, Islam is anything but peace, especially when Islam is the dominant religion. You can see this in practice in a country such as Pakistan. My friends, if you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. We would like the world to know how the Christian minority are being treated in Pakistan. Thank you very much for watching and as always, please pray for Sajjad Masi and his family and for all the Christians of Pakistan. May the Lord Jesus Christ grant you peace and blessing. Amen.